What's going on everyone, Collector Crow here again with some more manga licensing announcements. This time we've got Seven Seas who recently capped off their 5 Days of Fireworks event where they announced 29 new manga and light novel titles that they will be printing in English over the next half year or so. Most of these will debut in the spring of 2022 so be on the lookout early next year for these titles. So unlike last time I'm actually not going to read through all the different summaries because that took a long time. So instead, I'm just going to go over these titles and kind of rapid fire my thoughts on them. And so let's jump right into them. First off, we're going to start with the light novels. And the first one is called I Am Blue, In Pain and Fragile. It's by the author of I Want to Eat Your Pancreas and I Had That Same Dream Again, both of which are well-renowned titles and have been really popular over the past couple of years. It sounds like a story about reclaiming crushed dreams or even possibly learning to accept that dreams don't always come true in life. So it sounds like it's going to be a bittersweet title. Uh, I'm not too big on light novels, so probably won't be picking this or really any of the other light novels up. Survival in Another World with My Mistress. So this is a light novel and a manga, and it's by the creator of another Seven Seas title called Reborn as a Space Mercenary. I woke up piloting the strongest starship, which I believe was actually announced in their last batch or either the batch before. So essentially an isekai where our main character can... Uh, craft resources using a video game menu and at night he's attacked by some kind of monsters, non-humans, or um, whatever you want to call them. It essentially sounds like Minecraft. I don't know much about Minecraft, but that's the impression that I get. So yeah, uh, Isekai, if you like it, you might enjoy this. Uh, this actually is a ghost ship title, so I don't know how steamy it gets, either the light novel or the manga. But uh, yeah, I mean, if you like Isekai, here's one for you. Until I Meet My Husband, Manga and Essay Novel. So this is actually kind of cool. It's a memoir by a guy who actually had the first religiously recognized same-sex wedding in Japanese history. And, I mean, that's really cool to have a bit of actual history. I'm um, assuming that that's true. It says it's a historic memoir by a known activist. So I, I'm assuming this is really based in complete truth. But, yeah, this is actually really cool. Uh, I'm not really the target demographic, but... Uh, it's just cool that something like this actually is getting attention, and first of all, that it was even made, even especially in Japan. The Most Heretical Last Boss Queen from Villainess to Savior, light novel and manga. So, girl's reincarnated and realizes she has to become the final boss of a game. So, a villainess. This really just sounds like my life as a villainess, all roots lead to doom. But it says it's award-winning, so uh, I can't be too harsh on it. If you like this genre, which yes, this has become a genre, we have delved deeper than just isekai being a genre. We now have the ultimate isekai genre. So yeah, if you like other ones like this, here you go. It's another one. The Tunnel to Summer, The Exit of Goodbye, light novel and manga. So there's this supernatural thing called the Urashima Tunnel. And if you go through it, you apparently find what you desire most in exchange for part of your own lifespan. And so this sounds like it's about Two people who uh, meet up outside the tunnel and they start experimenting with it and I'm sure some kind of tragedy follows. So uh, I might pick this up. I doubt I'll pick up the light novel, but it sounds like an interesting enough premise. It kind of reminds me of The Infinite Corridor from uh, Castlevania. So I will we'll be probably trying the manga at least for this. Classroom of the Elite Manga. So I'm going to be real honest, I thought this was already uh, translated. Um, I've been meaning to check out the anime for this for a long time, and I just haven't. But Seven Seas also publishes the light novels for this. But I don't know all that much about the premise, except that from what I've read and what the summary says, it sounds kind of like Kakigurui, but probably less over the top. Where students are trying to compete to gain status and rank and favor within their school. So... Sounds interesting enough, probably will pick this up when it comes out. The Haunted Bookstore, Gateway to a Parallel Universe. So this is also a light novel that's being published by Seven Seas. So there's a bookstore that serves as a sort of gateway between the spirit realm and the human realm. And the girl who is in this bookstore, she encounters a, a exorcist who has wound up in the spirit realm and she ends up helping him heal and get back on the right path and get back home and i'm sure there's going to be some kind of trouble there between you know exorcist and spirit but um probably not a pickup for me but it sounds like it could be 
fluffy in a way. It doesn't sound like it's going to get too dark. I would probably say this is going to be like a very wholesome story, but that's just me guessing. Five seconds before a witch falls in love. So we have a Yuri story here where a witch actually turns her nemesis, a witch hunter, into a cat. And now she's responsible for saving the witch hunter, which I'm not really sure how that works because if you're a nemesis, wouldn't you just let it go? I'm on the fence about this one. It looks like it could be interesting. I just don't know about this one. I'm going to wait and see it. It's kind of a middle of the road potential pickup for me. But if you know anything about this and think I should check it out, do let me know. I'm a wolf, but my boss is a sheep. So Wolfman works at a company and his supervisor or a supervisor that works there is a sheep. And yeah, I'm not getting much more than that. Romantic Zootopia story. <laughs> yeah, this isn't for me. Um, hopefully there are some people who are excited about this though. My brain is different. Stories of ADHD and other developmental disorders. So this sounds like it could be a lot like those uh, other manga called My Lesbian Experience with Loneliness and My Alcoholic Escape. So I'm guessing it's about these people who all have developmental disorders and who have to uh, cope and get over the obstacles in life in a world that's, you know, not really built with them in mind, as the summary here says, and just how they have to navigate it differently from the majority of people and showing what kind of struggles they face every day. So this is a good thing to be published. A probably won't pick it up maybe might it's not going to be on my pool list as soon as it comes out but it's good that stuff like this gets attention and gets out there because the more people that read about this stuff the more people who can understand it the girl in the arcade so apparently a guy works in an arcade and he's pretty much ignored by everyone but then a beautiful girl comes in and requests him to help learning about the arcade's games they start dating and apparently according to the summary there's a lot of sexual tension i mean nothing grabs me off the top here the art is nice i mean you know she's very pretty i'll give her that but i doubt i'll pick this one up i'm it's again middle of the road might pick it up eventually but nothing's sticking out to me at the moment the muscle girl next door a boy meets ribbed girl love story <laughs> college student daria isn't a big guy it might be daria i'm sorry he's thin and kind of scrawny and he's a little self-conscious about it when he bumps into ruby san a totally cut lady who can haul massive logs around he thinks she's the epitome of macho coolness, and it's more than just the admiration or even envy. He's immediately smitten by her. Watch Daria chase after the buff and sexy Ruby in this charming modern love story. So I know I said I wasn't going to read the summary, but I felt like I kind of had to on this one. Yeah, uh, again, middle of the road. <laughs> I might would pick this up just to see how ridiculous it is. There's no way that this is a long-running manga. There's no way, there's no way. Yeah, okay, I looked it up. It ended with 20 chapters and apparently only one volume. Maybe these are shorter chapters like you have for a few like slice of life comedy manga. The Duke of Death and His Maid. So I know this is actually getting an anime adaptation pretty soon and it's I've seen some hype around it the last few days. So this might actually be a really good pickup. It wasn't on my radar at all, but just given the general attitude surrounding it, I might give this a shot. So it's about this young boy who, whenever he touches something, he causes it to die. So he was sent away where he pretty much only has like his butler and his maid around to care for him and help him and even be uh, social contacts for him. Even though he does have that affliction, his maid apparently falls in love with him. And so it's about them trying to work out a relationship despite the obvious difficulty that's between them given his cursed power but yeah uh, it sounds like it could be interesting uh the art style is not immediately grabbing me but that is a pretty cover I, you know despite the art style that, that's pretty I, I, I like that the saint's magic power is omnipotent the other saint manga a companion tale to the popular light novel manga and anime series so this girl gets reincarnated as a saint or possibly a fake saint going by the summary here and i'm guessing it's about how she deals with the responsibilities and possibly powers that come with that title and it sounds like she encounters the person who actually should have that title and how that's going to play out so i don't know anything about this series at all for the people who like uh, saints magic series congratulations sheeply horned witch romy so pretty much everyone in the world has been put to sleep except the sheep and a uh, witch and her senpai they're apparently the only people still awake in this post-apocalyptic world 
and that's really all it gives me. Um, <laughs> a love story it says at the top. So I'm guessing the senpai and the sheep witch are gonna fall in love and they're gonna have a little cute sheep companion going around with them in this grim destroyed world. I feel like I've seen this somewhere before, but I'll probably pick this up because it sounds like it has enough interesting unique qualities to it, but it was definitely not something that I had on my mind. Even if it was just once, I regret it. So I hate this title. I really hate this title. So apparently this woman quit her job and is having trouble paying her rent and is just spiraling really downward into a really depressive state. And her landlady comes up with the offer to reduce her rent and help her out with her problems in exchange for having sex. And I'm just saying that looking at that image, they don't either one of them look 24. I mean, may maybe the woman who's laying down. I don't know, I I've heard this is just a fluffy, wholesome Yuri series, but gosh, from the title and the description, this this kind of gives me cringe vibes. It makes me very uncomfortable because it sounds like coercion, sounds like there's someone lording something over someone else in exchange for the services, and also just the apparent age by the art. I could be wrong, I mean, I'm sure maybe a, a little girl is older than she looks. Monologue woven for you. So it's a love story between a college girl who is chasing her dreams of being in the theater and a, another college girl who pretty much has abandoned her dreams of being in the theater. And it's in full color, so that's really interesting. I don't know how I feel about that because I feel like it's sometimes manga doesn't always translate well to color. But it's interesting that Seven Seas is going that route with it. So uh, yeah, another Yuri story for those of you who are following Seven Seas for those titles. The Weakest Contestant in All Space and Time. So I think this is actually only a two volume series. I could be wrong. Like I, I googled this and I could not find anything about it. I looked up the authors and found all their other stuff, but I could not find anything on this series besides what Anime News Network said in their little news release blurb about Seven Seas announcements. So it's about this guy who gets abducted and forced to fight in a gladiatorial tournament, sort of like a battle royale. But he ends up escaping with a group of misfits being a slime girl, a useless robot, a ghost boy, and a bug monster. I could see the comedy with just a group of really underpowered people somehow winning fights and succeeding and getting away. That was a lot of the comedy with early One Piece when Usopp was in his fights because he would eventually win them and he'd win them through really weird and funny ways. So I can see a lot of that same kind of comedy possibly being present here. So I probably will pick this up because it, again it does... Uh, from what I know, seem like a low commitment read, which is most of Seven Seas titles because they're either really short or got canceled before the announcement. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to pick this one up though. Correspondence from the end of the universe. So a guy gets abducted by aliens and he gets asked to do some kind of task or quest or journey for them. And all the while he's wanting to return back to Earth and getting back to his fiance. This sounds like a really interesting take on sci-fi because it seems more slice of lifey, maybe a little bit philosophical. So I might pick this one up just because it sounds like something different, though I don't know how I feel about the design of that alien in the cover. <laughs> My dear friend Nokotan. So delinquent girl uh, rescues a monster girl, quotation marks monster, uh, who's like a deer elk person when she's in trouble. And I'm guessing it's about their hijinks that follow, possibly a Yuri story. I'm not sure. Doubt I'll be picking this one up. Just doesn't exactly seem like my cup of tea. But I will say it does look like it has some nice art. So I, I would be willing to give this one a shot if I ever just saw it on sale or something. Yakuza Reincarnation. So old gangster Yakuza guy wakes up in the body of a princess. Yeah, that's about all the summary gives me. <laughs> I feel like I've heard some people talk about this one. I typically don't gravitate towards isekai titles when they get announced. But this one sounds like it could have something going for it. Though I'm not sure how I feel about... Uh, older guy being reincarnated in the body of a young girl. Then again, we have Saga of Tanya the Evil, and that one's pretty good. I might pick this one up. We'll see. Then we have Witches, The Complete Collection. This is by Daisuke Igarashi, who wrote Children of the Sea. This sounds like a collection of different stories involving witches. The one that is prominent in the summary here involves unrequited love turning into a revenge story for some reason. That sounds a little extreme, but, you know, to each their own. Girl just gets kind of ignored and then comes back to uh, destroy someone's life. Yeah, healthy response. 
But anyway, it was originally two volumes in Japan. It won the Excellence Prize in 2004, so this is an older title. Children of the Sea was also a very cool release, so I will be picking this up when it comes out. My Next Life as a Villainess, side story, Girl's Patch. So I had the title wrong earlier. I was saying it was My Life as a Villainess. It's My Next Life as a Villainess. So it's an anthology collection involving the female cast of uh, Villainess. So if you like those characters and you like that series, then this is for you. If you don't, you probably won't have any interest in it. Hello Melancholic, another Yuri story. This extrovert girl wants this introvert girl to join her band. I'm calling them introvert and extrovert just because that's what I get based off the description, but I could be wrong. But uh, the shyer girl apparently has some baggage that she's got to overcome before she can really get back up to snuff and really play in the band with confidence. This might be something I check out. We'll see. All right, and now we get into our ghost ship titles and starting off with something I actually recognize, that being Darling in the Franks, also known as How to Ruin an Anime in 12 Easy Episodes. Darling in the Franks anime loved it up until the halfway point, which was around episode 13-ish or so, and then it just completely went off the rails. I've heard this manga has a different storyline or at least a different ending to be determined on whether it's a better ending or not, but I will be picking this up. If you don't know, Darling in the Franks involves a sort of dystopian world where these children pilot giant robots called Franks. They've really forgotten how to love and like they don't really know much about sex or anything, but the Franks requires a male and a female to pilot it. It basically uses their gender statuses to pilot it. I think in the anime it used the a flower parts metaphor of like stamen and pistol to determine the roles of the different pilots. And it actually had, and it actually started to explore some different things about how people first get intimate. And it started to explore how in this world where gender is clearly divided into two categories, how someone whose sexuality or even gender doesn't really fit into that might have trouble with their roles and their point in life. And then it just kind of abandoned all that towards the end of the series. But it had some interesting ideas, and I'm hoping the manga here can expand upon that some more. But yeah, girl on the cover, her name's Zero Two. Her pilots always end up dead whenever she pilots the Franks, and then she meets this boy named Hero who uh, doesn't actually die after they first pilot together. So it's about the two of them and their relationship growing, as well as the relationships of the kids around them. It says for mature readers, I'm really kind of wondering how far this goes because the anime was mildly tame for what it was it might just be because it's a ghost ship imprint it has to put that on there then we have 2.5 dimensional seduction so it's about a manga club and a girl who is really into cosplay joins it and i think i have heard a little bit about this where the different characters really get into the competition side of cosplay which is really cool but if you read the summary here it also talks about modeling the fetishy stuff which is a bit of a red flag. I might try this out. I'm very apprehensive about this one, but I might would give it a shot just because I do enjoy cosplay myself. And so getting to see a manga that focuses on that more competitive, more professional side of it, I would actually like to see. It's just not my night, tale of a fallen vampire queen. So a vampirist finds herself stranded on Earth and she's lost the power to drink human blood and has no way to regain her energy. At the same time, she still has to make the best of her new life. And so she ends up working part-time at a convenience store. It then alludes to the fact that she might sell her panties. I don't know if that's saying she's going to be a prostitute or if she's literally going to sell her panties. I don't know, this again, throws up some red flags. There's no mature reader's warning on this one for some reason, but it sounds like Devil is a part-timer, sexy fun time edition. I might stay away from this one. It just, it's throwing off a lot of bells in my head. Gumbered X Sisters. Speaking of vampires, there's an organization here called the Crimson Sisters who seeks to eradicate the vampire population. A girl named Dorothy encounters a wounded woman named Maria, only to discover that she is uh, part vampire and asks her to become her pet as her means of survival. I'm not really sure I want to know what that means. The art on the cover isn't doing my idea any favors. You know who you are if you're going to like this series and pick it up. I don't think I will, but you know, stranger things have happened. 
And then our last series is the 100 Girlfriends Who Really, 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 Really Love You. And this is another series that I had actually heard of. So I've heard that this is a good and moderately healthy representation of polyamorous relationships. A lot of times you have manga that go the harem route and there's a lot of people that end up getting hurt because people aren't super truthful but from what i know of this series everyone's pretty open and honest about things in this series so that's kind of refreshing so after failing on 100 dates it turns out there was some divine error with our main character aijo and now to make up for his failures in dating the gods are going to give him 100 dates that go successfully but there is a catch. The girls are destined to be his soulmate, and unless he returns their feelings each and every time, they're going to die in horrible accidents. So, yeah, um, that's a lot of pressure. But yeah, I, I probably will pick this one up. I have heard a lot of good things about it, so I'm willing to give this one a shot and see if it's actually a really unique and healthy take on the harem genre as I've heard that it is. So that wraps up our 7 Seas announcements for manga that will be coming out in early 2022. Let me know in the comments below which of these series you're most excited for and which ones you're going to check out when they get released. Thanks again for joining me for another segment of Manga News, and I'll catch you next time.